The Elofs have gone, and Venunu is again up for parole. But as usual, everything, even the location of the parole hearing, is secret. Apart from me and Peter Hownham, who's come from London, there are no other journalists here. He is the most uh, sensitive prisoner that this country's got, and uh, whenever he comes here, they block off the windows of his van if they can, or they, in the early days, they used to put a, a, a crash helmet over him so people couldn't see him, and at one point they even had a, a, an electronic device that emitted a screeching signal so people couldn't hear him speak. And yet, you and I are the only journalists here, the most sensitive prisoner Israel's got, and there's not a single member of the press here apart from you. Why do you keep coming? I keep coming because uh, he is in there because he spoke to me and we published his story in the Sunday Times in 1986 and uh, I feel a sense of responsibility uh, that we should be helping him get out. Three hours later the hearing ended. As usual, Venunu left behind darkened windows. In court, Horev's prosecutor had cited the war with Iraq as a new reason for blocking parole. The prosecutor, of course, uh, went back to the old argument that uh, Vanunu is a threat to the security, and she even said that if Vanunu will be released, probably the Americans will leave Iraq and go after Israel, and Israel uh, nuclear weapons, which I found extremely ridiculous. Minnesota, the Peace Bridge, and a weekly ritual. Every Wednesday, hundreds protest against the war. Mary's there, so of course is Nick. Every week, the numbers grow. There's a new generation of peaceniks who were children when Israel's nuclear weapons were exposed. Any of you guys heard of Mordecai Venunu? No, no. You don't know who he is? No. <laughs> and if I tell you that he's somebody who exposed Israel's weapon of mass destruction, which nobody knew about until then, what would you say? Why is our media that's supposed to be free and open not telling us? And why is our government not letting us know this information if we're living in the home of the free? I think if our administration was consistent or had any integrity, then he'd be held up as a hero. We're going to work with the members of the Security Council in the days ahead to make it clear to Saddam that the demands of the world and the United Nations will be enforced. In Washington, which gives Israel more than $3 billion a year, the talk is only of Iraq. For weeks, we've tried to get an interview about Israel's weapons of mass destruction, but no one in this Bush administration wants to talk about Israel. So we've asked for an interview about the military balance of power in the Middle East, and now they've agreed. This morning, we've finally been told that we're going to have an interviewee. He's an expert in all matters Israeli, he's an Under Secretary of Defense, and his name is Douglas Fife. The Pentagon has demanded a list of questions in advance. So, it's the balance of power, Israel's nuclear ambiguity, allegations of a double standard, and Mordecai Venunu. The gravest danger facing America and the world is outlaw regimes that seek and possess nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons. Yet again, the shutters have come down on this story. Our interview with Under Secretary for Defense, Douglas Fife, was scheduled for four o'clock, somewhere in this vast complex of the Pentagon behind me. Yet at the last minute, we've heard the interviews canceled. Questions about Israel, it appears, are strictly off limits. We'd received this email from the Pentagon. Ladies, we showed Mr. Fife the list of topics for the BBC interview. He is not willing to answer any of the questions you listed. Respectfully request you resubmit your questions as soon as possible this morning. 
questions directed toward the current Iraqi situation. On February the 19th, Fanunu was again refused parole. He remains in Ashkelon prison. Horev has let it be known he intends never to let Mordecai Vanunu leave Israel. You can comment on tonight's programme by visiting our website at www.bbc.co.uk forward slash correspondent. Next on Correspondent, America's Child Soldiers, how the military are taking over America's schools. That's next Sunday at 6.45.